Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon Fire Red. In the last part, we finished off four islands after starting off the post game. And now we're heading on to five island. And this is the only island in our tour through the Sevi Islands. We're going to be visiting a total of twice. Because we can't actively finish everything here. Uh, we do get some more awesome Gen 2 remixes though. Honestly, it's almost impressive to me how well... The gold, silver, crystal soundtracks work on the ruby, sapphire, emerald, fire, red, leaf, green sound font. It sounds pretty natural. Mind you, Pokemon music's always had just that kind of vibe to it, I suppose. With that, now it's time for us to head north into the... I think this is the Water Labyrinth? Any of the Pokemon you can encounter by fishing are the exact same as they have been throughout the game. But starting from Sarah, we can encounter a new enemy while surfing. This is Hoppip, a grass flying type. Uh, which means it's weak to flying, poison, rock, fire, and ice. Ice, I think, in particular is a four times weakness. Uh, it's pretty weak and nothing too notable. I I think specializes in special defense? But there's really nothing to it. Even its eventual evolutions, I recall, not being great. They're cute, though. I'll give them that. I could give that to a lot of Gen 2 Pokemon. And then there's this dude. He is going to actually give us a Pokemon egg. The way the eggs work in the Pokemon series is, depending on what the egg is, it'll take longer or less time to hatch, and it just eventually hatches into the baby form of whatever species spawned it. Usually, uh, the first stage when pairing with a Ditto, sometimes need an incense. More about that later. For right now, we have another new Pokemon, Meryl. This is a pure water type in this generation, later became a water fairy, uh, which means it is currently weak to grass and electric. High HP and its evolutions only continue that. If you can catch one, it's third evolution. Or no, it's second evolution. First evolution, technically, technically speaking, it's stage two in the set. Uh, Azumarill is super, super healthy. And now we're immediately on to another new Pokemon. This particular trainer type, Painter, only uses one Pokemon, Smeargle. Pure normal type, meaning it is weak to fighting exclusively. It's got some decent speed for being a Pokemon that doesn't evolve, but otherwise it's nothing too notable. The interesting thing about it is that it's a great Pokemon for catching other Pokemon, because its entire gimmick is that it has one particular attack I actually can't remember the name of right now, that it can learn, I want to say almost after every level, and it can you can use that to copy the last move used by the opponent. So if you can get a moveset that has some stat moves, moves that reduce to 1 HP, so on and so forth, it's great for catching Pokemon. Next up, we have another new Pokemon. This is Skiploom, the immediate evolution of Hop-Hip. Still grass flying, so still weak to flying, poison, rock, fire, and ice. Again, speed's good for a second stage evolution, but the line is nothing too strong. It is almost kind of funny to me just how many Jotomon they throw at you in a row throughout this entire section, because you encounter, like... I want to see at least a third to half of the Johto decks just by fighting the natural trainers around here. For instance, now we have Mareep, pure electric type. Uh, we do ground in that case exclusively. It's got some decent special attack for a stage one evolution, and by the time it reaches its second evolution at level 30 or so, which, speaking of which, why do you still have this as a Mareep lady? I mean, I guess maybe it's cuter. Uh, it becomes a really good electric type pre-physical special split. Oh, and also, uh, a lot of the opponents from this point onwards are going to be using items pretty commonly if their Pokemon's low in HP, usually Hyper Potions, or if they're a rich type of trainer, Full Restores. The ti the only time, really, in Pokemon where enemy trainers use uh, items is usually the Elite Four and Champions, sometimes Gym Leaders. I feel like they've gotten more common with doing that earlier in the game as of the past two generations or so, though. At least from my memory. I think it really depends on the character class. And now this is Selfie's house. Thankfully, there's no train models, but there's also no one here. More on why later. Also, technically speaking, we're in a different area right now. There's a couple items I actually can't grab here because I think you need to beat uh, the Sevi Island storyline to actually have certain Pokemon show up. Or certain items show up, rather. And with that, now we're moving on to the Lost Cave. This place is interesting. It's essentially the Lost Wood from Legend of Zelda. If you take a wrong turn, you're sent right back to the start of it. 
the way this place works is that the way you're supposed to figure out where to go is dependent on the amount of rocks in the room. Think of it like a clock. 12 is north, 3 is east, 6 is south, 9 is west. So in this case, after I encounter this Pokemon, since there's three boulders in this room, I want to head east. And now this is a Murkrow. Dark flying type, meaning it is weak to rock, electric, ice, and fairy from memory, though that doesn't come into play until later. It's got some decent attack stats and speed. And its evolution, I think, continues that. It's not awful, but there's better flying types and better dark types you could use in any other direction. Now, there is one pathway we want to take to get to the end of this place, but I'm deliberately taking the wrong path at a couple points because it's the only way you can get certain items like the Lax Incense and one other incense later on. Uh, the incense is... Oh, first off, this lady's going to have some new Pokemon. Uh, starting off, she's going to have a not to, a Psychic Flying type. Uh, that makes it weak to Rock, Ghost, Electric, Ice, and Dark. High special attack and speed for a stage one evolution. I... Uh, Depending on where you can eventually find one of these in one of the other games where, you know, you're not building a competitive team and using it for main game, it's not a bad psychic or flying type. Especially when it gets to its second stage evolution, Zatu, at level 25. Still psychic flying, so same weaknesses. It's got some decent special attack and speed, so especially if, like, you're playing through Johto and you get one of these, you're probably good to use it, at least until after the Elite Four. I'd like, going back to what I was saying. Uh, the incenses we can find here, there's two in particular, the Lax and C incense, if I recall correctly. What th you're supposed to do with those is give them to certain Pokemon when you put them into the daycare on Four Island, so that the egg that they generate will actually hatch as the baby version of that Pokemon. So, for instance, if you want a Why Not, which is the pre-evolution of the Pokemon Wobbuffet we'll be seeing later on, you want to give it the Lax Incense. The C Incense does the same thing, but for Meryl and Azumarill to produce Azurill. Also, I'm speeding this place up just because getting all the items and going through it's just a process of going over and over and over and over and over again until we get to the end. Also, I got so engrossed in talking about that, I completely forgot to read Lady Selfie's dialogue. Oh, well, we found her! And she's fighting us with a Persian and uh, something else I can't remember the top of my head right now. She's technically the boss fight, so she's being shown at normal speed. Most of the Pokemon you're going to be encountering throughout the latter Sevi Islands are going to be in the high 40s to mid 50 level range, I'd say. More or less the levels of the Elite Four now that I think about it. So... If you beat the Elite Four, you're going to be having no trouble with these guys. In fact, they'll be getting some pretty good experience out of it in my eyes. In fact, the second best... Well, technically the best, but the chronologically second best location to grind in the game... That's not from using wild Pokemon, that is... Is on Seven Island in particular. And we'll be showing that off... Next part, I think? Yeah, that sounds right. Maybe... No, actually, no, I think that's part 25 now that I think about it. I'm so glad that you happened here. I grew rather bored of walking, and I'm feeling fatigued. May I ask you to take me home from here? Sure thing. Thank you. You may go now. All right, so Selfie's house actually has a secondary purpose, and really quickly, I'm actually going to be going back into the Lost Cave, uh, because where she was, there's now an item, the Silk Scarf, which increases the power of normal-type moves. As you can see, for me, she wants to see a gloom. For you, she might want to see something else. If you show her the Pokemon she wants, she'll give you, or she'll, rather, she'll have her butler give you one of, like, seven different items, which are, like, a Luxury Ball, Nugget, the Pearl and Big Pearl, Stardust, Star Piece, and Rare Candies. Basically, a lot of good sale items. It's nothing spectacular. I think it resets every certain step count. It's nothing too much, but if you're looking for easy money, it's there, I suppose. But now let's head east and immediately run into a new encounter. This is Sentret. This it was the Rattata for Gen 2, more or less. Completely normal types of weak to fighting. It's got, for very early games, some okay special defense and attack, but it's nothing spectacular. Oh, and hi, Team Rocket. You're not being subtle at all, I see. This portion of Five Island, I think, has a different selection of Pokemon, but it's a lot of things we've seen before. I think the only thing new here depends on your version, uh, and that's with fishing with the Super Rod, I think. Fire Red, I think you can find Quillfishes. Remoraids can be found over on Leaf Green, I think. 
Neither of which are spectacular water type Pokemon. If I had to take a choice, I would indeed pick Remoraid because it's the one that evolves. Yeah, you know, no, let's go back and take care of that Team Rocket Grunt now. This guy is technically required, despite being a Team Rocket Grunt who we've seen plenty of before, and is using the exact same Pokemon set that we've seen over and over again. You know, it's a wonder that they didn't get taken out by a different kid, because as long as you, like, use a Psychic type, you are good. Psychic and Water are all you need against Team Rocket. Now, directly to the north of us right now is the Team Rocket warehouse that's been mentioned back on Four Island. We can't do anything there yet. We need two passwords to enter it, and we only have the first one. This is why I said if you go through the islands in order, you technically have to come back to Five Island a second time to actually be able to complete anything here. And with that, we're already on to the next major area. This is the Memorial Pillar area. Nothing too new to be caught here from anything. If you've seen or fished as much as you can from the other places around here, you've seen all the Pokemon for Five Island. With that said, though, there is a couple more Pokemon to find all the same because we got this particular bird keeper here, the youngest of the bird brothers. He has two new Pokemon for us, the flying types of, uh, I guess, the Pidgeys for Gen 2. Starting off, he's going to throw out Hoot Hoot, normal flying type, rock, electric, and ice for weaknesses. It's got a decent HP stat for a stage one. Nothing else really that spectacular about it, though. Next up, he's going to throw out the Evolution Noctowl, which evolves from Hoot Hoot at level 20, still normal flying type. Weak to Rock Electric in Grass. Still got a good HP stat, and it's... Uh, I think its special stats aren't too bad. At a point, by the way, where if I'm recalling correctly, flying used physical stats, so, uh... At this point in time, not the best flying type. Became a bit better from Gen 4 onwards. The physical special split had a very interesting effect on a lot of Pokemon because some Pokemon who weren't too good got really good. I'm looking at Flareon in specific because physical type fire moves. And others had the exact opposite where they were really good and then got kind of crap because they couldn't learn many physical or special moves to take advantage of their stats. Whoops. Hello, your Pokemon look healthy. This is where I buried my Onyx. It was named Tectonix. Well, damn. It's actually kind of one thing I like about Pokemon. It acknowledges death. <laughs> that is something you don't see in a lot of kids' games, and I kind of admire it for that, because it's part of life, and in a way, it's kind of important to teach kids about it. But pouring a lemonade to respect it gives us TM42, which I never use. I actually can't even remember what that is. And here we get the Metal Code. That is used to evolve Onyx, but you need to have the Onyx hold it and then trade it away. Also, I'm looking for an item that is just not there for me. And this is me showing, yeah, we can't do anything here yet. So with that, let's just ignore this and head right on over to Six Island, which might be the largest island in the Sevi Islands. Definitely isn't population-wise. I think that's three island, but I think in terms of the pure count of areas, this is the largest. And I should probably also use the Pokemon Center because uh, my Pokemon aren't the best right now. I usually just use Pokemon Centers as a jump cup. Oh, hi! Hey, Kyle. How's your Pokedex filling up? Looks like it's impossible to get all the Pokemon by hanging around just these parts. Maybe there are Pokemon we don't know about somewhere far away. Well, if I can't do it, there's no way for you to get it done. I'm not going to get all desperate over this. I'll keep collecting Pokemon at my own pace while I train them. That's what I'll do, so there's no point in staying here. I may as well leave for home. That's that, then. Smell you later. I really don't know what it is about Blue that stuck out to people for years as the best rival when... No... <laughs> Admittedly, looking back as an adult, I can almost detect a hint of respect in what he's saying, but in the way that friends who've known each other for a long time will shit all over each other, just like, yeah, yo, asshole, what you doing? That, that kind of thing. I think the only truly antagonistic rival to your character, looking back, is Silver from Gen 2. Because he's just outright a villain from the start of the game. <laughs> and then he gets somewhat better later on, not exactly. 
Now, there are two routes to take here in five, um, six island, rather. And I'm heading north first because south is technically plot progress. And I want to just show up, show off the north first. In particular, there's two trainers a note for this part. This lady here has two Pokemon of interest to us. The first one she's going to throw out is Chinchow. Water electric type, meaning it is weak to ground and to grass. And it's got a decent HP stat. The electric subtype means it can learn some pretty decent moves. And the Volt Absorbability is really good, considering it completely makes any attacks from th electric types useless. I think it might also restore HP, but don't quote me on that. I think I might be thinking of Water Absorb now that I think about it. The electric water type is one I really like, though, because it's one that, with the right ability, becomes very defensive. Uh, I'm thinking of Electros, I think it's how it's pronounced, in Gen 5, who gets that type, but has, I think, the... Oh, wait, no, actually, now I think about it, I think it was a pure electric type with Levitate, meaning you couldn't hit it. Oh, dang, yeah, that, no, no, looking back, that's really good. Uh, either way. Next up is Lantern, the evolution of Chinchou starting at level 27. Still electric grass, meaning it's weak to ground, or electric water, meaning it's weak to ground and grass. This thing's HP stat is kind of ridiculous. Not as ridiculous as, like, Vaporeon's, but it's still a pretty healthy, uh, fish. Its attacks or defenses aren't the best. In fact, I think its special and attack stats are equal for the physical and special ones, respectively. So, it can be good, I just don't like it. I'll always have a, bad, a water type I prefer to use over it. Mind you, I think I hinted at this earlier. One thing you should get used to seeing in my Pokemon main series LPs going forward is expect to see a Vaporeon, honestly. My usual thing going forward with Pokemon games is that I like to have my team be comprised at least of four new Pokemon for that generation and two oldies. Uh, and usually Vaporeon is one of those oldies. And this Aroma Lady, oh boy, she throws out Sunkern, pure grass type, uh, meaning it's weak to flying, poison bug, fire, fire, and ice. Its stats all suck. It is universally, I think, 30. I think statistically, it's still the worst Pokemon in terms of its base stat total. There might be one worse, though, if I recall correctly. Either way, next up, she throws out some floor. The evolution of some kind when a sunstone, I believe, is used on it. Still, pure grass type. Uh, week two, flying, poison, bug, fire, and grass. It gets some decent stat boosts. Uh, I think, in particular, its special attack gets a ridiculous boost compared to Sunkern. Still, though, pure grass types are seldom something I'll use. In fact, grass is probably one of the Pokemon types you'll see me use the least overall. Unless it's like a subtype or it has a really good secondary typing like Psychic or something along those lines. Now this portion of the water path has this particular house here. What this lady in this house is looking for is a record-breaking Heracross horn. And if you give one to her, or at least show one to her rather, she'll give you a Nest Ball, which has a better chance of catching Pokemon who are lower level than you. I, I'm not going to do this at all because it's not a major side quest. It's just there if you want to try and get some Nest Balls. There's a similar thing with the Fishing Guru back on Route 13 or 12, I forget which route, uh, with Magikarp sizes. Either way, with that, I'm going to need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part 24, we're going to continue on through 6 Island before, I believe, heading on to 7 Island. See you guys then.